We are Karate 360. After coming back from the BC Provincial Championships, we're going to talk all about it, as well as break down uh, the results from Okinawa, the K1 Premier League, uh, sorry, Series A. I'm one of the hosts, Kalen Angloss. I'm Richard Mosdell. And here we go. Let's start the show. You will kick high and I will sweep low from local to global. It's the thing that you love. Karate. San Rokumaru. Bring it on. Bring it home. Just thought I'd maybe give that one a little length. Absolutely, yeah. I was almost going to do a little uh, Bill Murray there. The thing that you love, <laughs> yeah. At the end. Here we go. We're back. We're back in action. There's been a lot of action. There's been a lot, a lot of action. action. It's been a busy a lot week. Of action. It's been a lot of action going on. Mm-hmm. Everything. It's been crazy. We're fresh back, sleepy eyed from the Karate British Columbia BC Championships. Saturday Recreation Divisions Sunday Elite. So overall, what did you think? You were coaching for us. You were in the action. Well, before, in the we, before we get there, I mean, yes. we were talking about this before. We had here from our club, athletes. Yes. Coaches. Yes. Officials. Yes. Tournament directors. Yes. What else can you ask for? Man, the island just brings it. Just, we just bring we it. We bring the fire. That's right. I think I saw... I almost no volunteers from the mainland. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. really? Mm-hmm. I didn't. Yeah, I wasn't looking. I saw officials, time. but I saw officials being volunteers. What would they do? What would they do without us? I know, I know. I, saw, I heard people saying that it's so far to get to the oval from their house, thirty minutes away. Whatever. <laughs> How, what, what do they even know? Yeah. So. Uh, from my perspective, the coaching perspective, it all went good. I think the recreation division, you know, is a lot. We had, I think, uh, what, fifteen in total? Total of fifteen. I think ten or eleven on so Saturday. ten or eleven on Saturday, and then the rest of them on Sunday. Mm-hmm. The elite divisions, those elite athletes going for the provincial team, uh, the recreation division, the recreation people that went over. I thought that was great. Some of them, this was the biggest tournament that they've done outside mm-hmm. of the Canada Open. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think they all performed well. You can see that they're getting better. I think everybody that we send, everybody that's going to these tournaments is just making the, the, the steps to getting better and competing better. They're starting to understand the rules more. You know, yep. I, f- I found a lot of people were understanding, and we're going to talk about this in a little bit, but right now it's okay to step out of the ring in the last 15 seconds yes. if, you, if you only have one or two penalties. Yes. If you're below Hansel Kachui. So a lot of people are trying, starting to figure that out now, yep. that they can yep. actually do that. But that going to be changing we'll talk about that later but so people are figuring out the rules a little bit people are are getting more comfortable in the ring because they just have more experience absolutely a lot of our group aged up yes yeah uh so it was new for them this is one of the first tournaments i've seen where there was no clear strong club yes yeah and that was one of the things that coach matt bickle said from from vancouver as well he said uh you know it used to be several years ago you would go to these type of tournaments and you'd be draw you'd maybe get a favorable draw you'd mm-hmm. be against a, a club that maybe isn't as active or they don't do a lot of yep. competition so you thought okay this is an easy first round well no no there's no easy rounds anymore every club yes. is competitive and even you know the young 11 12 and above uh, all that they're all competitive and it's yeah. all good like it's all good competition no exactly um since the format was changed, what, 18 months ago or whatever, now people are really training for it, mm-hmm. you know? Um, the tournament from a macro level was a tournament. You had to get divisions done. But there's no sizzle on the steak. No sizzle on the steak. We talked about this. No sizzle. No sizzle. There was no, you know, we, sh- we need opening ceremonies. We need some demos. We need some board breaking. Mm-hmm. A little sizzle. You need a little sizzle. Because no, okay. it's like, here's the other thing. I think there should be no Canada flags or BC team flags on their jackets. That's what you're saying, on the gi jackets. Absolutely none. Okay, why? Because it's a club tournament. Right. When you're up there, you're not representing BC. Mm. What's on your jacket, it's what you're representing. I mean, you're not representing BC. You're not representing. There are people in that tournament who had Canada flags on their jacket who aren't on the Canadian national team. They just happened to have traveled to an international event for their style. Sure. Thrown the Canada flag on, competed, and never taken it off. Okay, but what about athletes who have either status with the national team or who... Doesn't matter. Not, not competing for BC at the provincial championships. Okay, okay. 
So you want them to take that badge off yep. and put their club badge on. You know what? It used to be like that for ages and ages. Yeah. You weren't allowed to wear the BC flag or the Canada flag at provincials because the head coach is not registering you as the BC team to fight in provincials. Right. Your coach or your parents are. That's right. So you should. it's a celebration of the community. Okay. And also, it confuses some of the officials. The officials are normal, yes. and some of them are young and new. I go, oh, that person's got a Canada flag on. And then we saw people with BC flags and Canada flags lose. Yes. A lot. Yes, but maybe they shouldn't have. Yes. And, or they legitimately deserve to lose, but they were wearing a Canada flag or yes, BC flag. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. yeah. So, no, no, it should be a celebration of your club. You should go up there with your club badge on. Mm. Uh, some people say, well, you know, that's their community. No, it's not. It's a badge. You have to learn how to sew or find someone who knows how to sew. Or you had a good idea too is just put the white tape over yeah, top. Just and, tape and over throw, it. Yeah. So what they do in Japan. You go to these tournaments, it's a it's you have to celebrate your club. Now it's yeah, it's nice to see the, the BC flag, but then some people are wearing a BC flag on their jacket. They're not on they're on the BC team last year. Mm. They haven't they haven't even got on the BC team this year. They haven't got on the BC team. Some of them, yes, are returning champions. But it's but some like, of the returning champions didn't compete. Sure. It's kind of like a badge of honor, though, is it not? Like, I feel like it'd be the same as if you wore a BC team jacket. Like, some people are still wearing BC team jackets from years but ago. But you're not competing in your BC team jacket. Mm, okay. okay. You're not getting. You're not putting you on your BC team black jacket and getting on the floor and competing. No. But it, you, yeah, okay, I see what you're this saying. Is a, this is a club. You're warming up, probably. In it, when you look at the results, it doesn't say BC team member. No, it, it just says, says, it says Canada. It says, yeah, yeah. yeah. Canada flag. It's, it's supposed to say your club name. Yeah. This is a club event. It's a, that's why they call it Provincial Championships. Yeah, but when you look at the results, everybody's, it just says Canada. Canada yeah, Canada, that's just sport Canada. data. Yeah, that's just sport data. It's but. supposed to say the club name, um, which is unfortunate because we want to promote the club. Mm. But it's all about, the club instructor is really important. Once they say, I'm not interested anymore, nobody goes. Yeah, that's true. Nobody goes. Yeah. If I just go, you know what? I'm not interested anymore. And no one from my club will get to go. Mm. They'll have to start their own club like I had to. But my club instructor was like, screw you guys. I'm not registering you for anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so um, I, I, yeah, I am the first to be really happy for anybody who makes on the BC team or the Canada team and get a, a badge on their gi. Mm -hmm. This isn't the purpose of the tournament. And so it kind of, that's what confuses it a little bit. That's part of the sizzle and the steak that gets lost. Sure, sure. You know, like, it's, we should be seeing more club badges and understand who these people are and where they're coming from. Mm, no, I agree. I'm just playing a little devil's advocate because no I feel like when you get that badge, it's like, okay, you've earned a spot on the team. Even if it was year, years prior, uh, you've, you've earned that badge. So it would be the same as if, you know, in the military, I don't know anything about military badges, but, you know, you get your badge of honor for whatever. That goes on even when you're, you're you know, when you're a veteran, you're not actually in the services anymore you still get to wear your badge afterwards but you're not fighting a war when you get to wear it and walk down the street later mm, okay remember these aren't these aren't qualifications that you get for life you make the bc team you're on it for a season then you're off yeah right think yes. of a sports team yeah right you're on the sports team. But if you're a national champion, if you're a previous national champion, you're, that's, that's with you forever, regardless, you know, or, three, four years later. You're yeah. still a national, you know, 2008 national champion or whatever. But you don't wear your Canada badge when you won the well, some people 2007. Do. Some people if, you, do. if you won a Canada, if you won the gold medal in Kata in 2008, and it's 2017, and you come back and go, <laughs> this is really common in Japan where people make the national team, they get given the jacket, it's mm -hmm. a square with a, it's the flag of Japan underneath in white letters says Japan, but it's wrapped in blue so you can read it. And they'll wear it and they'll go, oh, wow. I'm no, no, no. I was a junior when I was 17, 20 years ago, and I got the uniform. And now I pull it out whenever I want to like show off I was a member yes, of the national that's, team. That's what it kind of is. Sometimes. Right? It's, it's romantic. Yeah. And but, it's used. It's just kind of a scare tactic, right? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, oh, I'm going against the Canada flag type thing. So. And, and I remember from my sensei, who was the head coach for 10 years in Japan. And 10 years of assistant coach after was like, no, they shouldn't be doing that. Mm. They, it's almost like they should hand it back in. You know, um, no, no, I, yeah, it's cool when you win. But remember, when you win a national championship, they give you a medal, not a, they give you a medal to hang in your room. Yes. You know but I mean? you get a badge to be on the national team too. Yeah. 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 And, um, so that's fine. It has a purpose. If you want to wear it in, in your dojo, you're like really happy about it. You're going to go teach a kid's class at a high school, mm. fill your boots. But what was the purpose? 
purpose. You're registered to represent your club at a tournament where your club match. And it, it, that will be a celebration of our people, of what we're doing. Because as soon as, you, when you make the BC team, it's not another dojo. When you make the Canada team, it's not another dojo. And people forget that. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, this is me. Uh, we have some demos and stuff. Someone said, oh, we should have a line dance. No, we don't need a line, line dance. dance. Like, you know, the, line, the Chinese line, uh, lion dancing. Oh, uh, yes. Right? Okay. No, no. We need people to go out there and do legitimate karate demos. Yes. And, and have, have a blast. Um, I don't know. Do we, need a, do we need a demonstration for a provincial championship? Maybe on the, the recreation day. No, no, recreation day for sure. Yeah, the recreation yeah, yeah. day, I think. For yeah. the elite day, I think it almost takes away from it. No, I don't think there's anything needed on the meeting because no. it's there's enough action as it is. Yeah, and in, you, there was a very distinct difference in the atmosphere on the totally. Saturday opposed to the Sunday. Sunday, there, there was emotions involved. Like it was, oh, yeah. it was go time on Sunday for those athletes. Not to say that it wasn't on Saturday, but you know, it was a lot more friendly on Saturday, a lot more loose. There are people there who legitimately thought that they're going to make it to 2020. Yes, I know. I know. I talked. I heard. I know. <laughs> and you don't want to crush the dreams. No. But now, if they, it is, I mean, if they, if they it's not if outside they the realm it, of possibility. Hey, if they win a top eight placement at the World Championships to next year, 2018, it gets them some serious points. Yes, for sure. You know, and if they yeah. go to a lot of events in 2018, they get some serious points. Yeah. But people who have no points right now. I'm not talking about people who are were competing this year in WKF events. Mm. Well, no, but they're not taking, they're not even starting the points until June, right? That's when the qualification points start to kick no, in. No, no, wait. Craig said that uh, whatever points you have now count. They carry over? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I, I was under the Wherever they're at right now. June. Okay. Because so we'll that see. gets you into the, right? Whatever points you have right now gets you into C in K1s. Yes, of course. Yeah. So, so if you so have no I points see. right now, you can't get into K1s mm -hmm. and you can't keep accumulating points. Mm -hmm. it's, crazy. it's crazy. I see what you're saying, though. It was, but it was an interesting event. Uh, my ring, I had the heavyweights, no injuries at all. First no, there time. was. I, see, I felt that there were like there wasn't very many injuries. Good right control. The board. I didn't see one clean foot sweep takedown the entire tournament. No, I didn't either. No. I saw people fall down. Yeah, and I maybe saw like legitimately nice head kicks, maybe like five. Okay. Yeah, I saw a I lot saw of a few. I saw, I saw a lot of flicks to the head with the shin. Yes. Yeah. I saw a lot of hitting on shoulders and stuff. Yeah, I saw a lot of hitting on the shoulders. But I didn't see like a really nice target. I saw a lot of swinging legs mm -hmm. to the head, which a lot of referees scored. As a referee, what do you think is the one thing that the province needs to work on the most in terms of, of is it attacking? Is it defending? Is it scoring first? Is it blocking? Stop doing these tanpatsuwaza. I have no idea what that is. One technique. technique. Okay. One. Okay. Yeah. It's called tanpatsuwaza. Mm. Lenzoku. You probably heard Lenzoku means continuous because yes. they use that in judo and shoot. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, Tanpatsu was like throw a technique and stop. Throw a technique and yes, stop. Yes. So that was one of the, the things. Shotokan people have to stop going, er, ho, he, ha, ho, ho, ha, he, ha, ho, uh, through every single move. If they do that, the, the scores will go up. We saw some for, it's been a while since I've seen some really strong. Shotokan more than just once every hour right. in kata, so it right. was good. Did you see Nigel do his kata? Loved it. Awesome. Loved so it. So awesome. I remember he was like 14 and 15 oh, years yeah, old. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. No, it was great. And uh, I went up to him and I said, what are you doing here? You should, you should be tomorrow. Yeah, no kidding. You should be in tomorrow's kata yeah, division. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it was nice to see. And what is he now, 35? Something like that, yeah. 35? So, no, it was beautiful. It was really nice. Um and like his whole, like, you know, the gray hair gelled back and the beard and like the whole look. It works. Looked totally it was yeah. smooth. Yeah. It's nice. Um, how about you from your coach's side? So the one thing that I think that. Other that, than ring six officiating. Yeah. We're going to oh, talk about it. Let's not get into ring my boy six was in. <laughs> yeah. Let's not get started on that. Uh, aside from that, I think the one thing that athletes have to work on the most is, is, you know, going for the point like like go to score don't just go to try and think and also don't look for the point yeah <laughs> richard just showed me a picture here. yeah that's funny the kid got a uh, a point for it not a penalty okay well then uh and don't look for the flags don't just throw something out and then look oh 
oh, did yes. it, oh no. And so keep going, go until they call Yeme. So yes. I think that's uh, one of the things that came up. I think one of the, and I kind of alluded to it earlier, is one of the better things that I saw was when I was coaching one of our athletes, Malia, and she's, mm. she's one of those athletes that's been getting better in yeah. competitions, but she really is starting now to, to listen, like take in what you say and apply it in her fight. Like even I tell her before, okay, this, this girl's a counter puncher. You need to draw it out. You need to do this. And then you need to double up afterwards. And she went in there and she did it and she performed. So, so I think that was one of the best things. And just also recognizing the, the, I mean, we had a couple athletes that, lost on it but the where you can get the joe guy to go yes. to Hansel Chewy, yeah. you know so that kind of thing but you know just learning and, and people figuring out uh, what they can and can't do so i think that was good it was awesome watching you and craig coach because you guys are so positive and like you're always there and helpful and yeah, it's it was like great. man this is awesome it was pretty funny so the last ring that the last event was the men's open at the very end every other mat was done they were tearing down and warren doesn't you know, really have a, have a coach yep. up north. So, uh, oh, you guys are razzing him or something. Right? Yeah, like, we were, we were. <laughs> so he was fighting, uh, Jida, I think. Yep. And, um, what's his wife's name? I can't remember his wife's Chantel. name. Chantel. Chantel. So she was actually sitting in the thing, but he yeah. asked us if we, we could coach him. So there was Craig sitting on the floor. I was standing there. Our rash was beside me and Chantel was in the chair and we were all yelling things <laughs> at him. And he's going, who's my coach? And we go, committee coach by committee <laughs> coach by committee and then uh he was getting like we were we were all pretty much saying the same yeah. thing but then craig was just screwing with him okay all right here's when it gets to the shootout i want you to go top right hand corner make sure you use the slap <laughs> shot and warren he must have just been in the zone he, he looks he goes okay and he just like keeps going and craig looks at me and goes he has no idea what i said <laughs> it's really funny and then he turns out and then he comes he looks at craig again and craig goes all right i want you to use the wrist shot followed by the <laughs> knuckleball. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then Warren realized he was joking with him. He's like, oh man, come on. <laughs> That's really funny. That is really, really funny. Good. Yeah. That is really good. So, ah, and the other thing that came up is if you're scoring with a technique or if you're scoring with something, stick to it. What are you trying to do? <laughs> of <laughs> no, course. Stick to it. Again, Warren, he was uh, fighting Jida. He scored a beautiful one to mm -hmm. Gakazuki to the, to the body, perfectly placed, perfectly timed, scores a point. Does it again, scores a point. Now all of a sudden he's getting greedy. He wants to throw some kicks. Romantic. Jida scores. Try to throw yes. a kick, Jida scores. So I'm yelling at him, Warren, just do your one two. Gets it? Boom, boom. Yes. Scores. Like, Three in you a row. see what happens when you yeah, do it? Do exactly. it again. Boom, boom. Scores. So if something's scoring, Stick to it. Like until so they figure it out, just keep throwing. It's same it. thing with Steve, right? Yeah. Steve starts scoring beautiful, fast punches. Yeah. Right in the eighty-four plus, and then decide to like just defend his points and move backwards. Mm, that's the problem. No, no, keep going. He looked over at me and on my finger because I was cancer, and I was just pointing like <laughs> go like this. He kept looking at me like you know like just go. And he started going, started scoring again. Yeah. Because that's it. If if you're at four or five zero. You, there's no need to defend your points. Just take it to 8 0. Yeah, why not? Finish like, it, until, off, wrap it up. I mean, with DJ, when Warren was fighting him, DJ finally turned his body and then was kind of looked at him like, come on, I can finally dodge it. But that yeah. was like the fourth time. By that time, he was done. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, um, anyway, it was a good tournament. Good tournament. Great with Iran. The uh, officiating was great. The assistant tournament director was suspect at best. <laughs> Shout out to Nick. He was great. But uh, yeah, some All right. hilarious stories about how him talking to the coaches. Yes, yes. yes. All um, right, well, let's dive in. We have uh, some Karate Global news to talk about here. Let's do it. Okay, so we haven't yet talked about the Karate One Series A in Okinawa. Do you want to hear about it? Because I know some inside stuff. Oh, you got some inside scoop. Give it to me. Before we go in the results, uh, talk to some officials that were there. Okay. So this year, since the point thing W point points is, oh, yeah. has become so much more important. These events have doubled in size. Well, I don't, I, I believe it for sure. This was a two day event, and day one started at 8 a.m. Oh, yeah, you saw and this. finished at midnight. That's insane. And they had no dinner break. Could you imagine? I mean, hard enough on the athletes trying to be, but the officials, the officials, this is old on. school, man. man, oh, man. I, I haven't been to it to like. Once or twice, there was a cardio for like the ten thirty or something. They're gonna have to uh, change it to a three day event or something. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think it was just two days. It and... was only two days. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, November twenty fifth and twenty sixth, we have the results as per usual. Let's do them. So let's go through the uh, gold. These are just gonna be the gold medals 
from each of the divisions. You, I'll, I'll do the divisions. You do the division. I'll do the names. Yeah. Let's start away. Here we go. Fimokata. Who else? Kyo Shimizu from Japan. Kumite minus 50 female. Is Shia Shuang Gu from Chinese Taipei. Female Kumite minus 55. Is Anzalika Terlugia from U Ukraine. Female Kumite minus 61. Giovanna Rekovic from Serbia. Female Kumite minus 68. Inga Shirozia from Russian Federation. Female Kumite 68 plus. Is Ayumi Yuk Yukusa from Japan. Female Team Kumite. Or Team Kata? Oh, sorry, Female Team Kata. <laughs> Who else? Team Japan. I saw there's two teams from Japan there. Uh, male Kata. Again, who else? Ryo Kiyuna. Male Kumite minus 60. Amr Mezdaraz from uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran. Male Kumite minus 67. Hiroto Shinohara from Japan. Male Kumite minus 75. Uh, Luigi Busa winning in uh, the minus 75. Congratulations. Male Kumite minus 84. Lutara Araga. Araga back to uh, win the minus 84 kilogram. Male Kumite 84 plus. Is Salah Abazari from the Islamic Republic of Iran. And male team Kata. Who else? Team Japan led by Ryo Kayuna. So is Agiev on the charts? Agiev, so he's what, minus 75, right? He was, was he even at the. I, I thought in the description said that he was going. They did say he was going, but he's not on even the top. 10 and I don't believe it. So I'm going to say maybe he didn't go. They said he had registered, but I can't imagine he didn't get the top 10. Okay. But again, Japan dominating on home turf in the final K1 of the year. Now, is this because a lot of people want to get more points in this one to make it to the Premier League from next year? Mm -hmm. Could be. Would that be one of the reasons? Could be. But Last anyway. year, it's going to be in Okinawa, too. That's right. It's going to be at uh, the Budokan, right, next mm -hmm. year? Yeah. As far as I know, it's at the Nippon Budokan because they're getting ready for it. Right. What are, are you just checking to see if uh, he was there? Yeah. What is he? Minus, Minus 75, right? Yeah. Let's just have a look. So just look at him. It says he's registered. Take a look there. Click on that. Maybe it says. I clicked on it, but. Oh, wait. There we go. I don't know if oh, it shows. Oh, it's his WKF ranking. Mm. Um, he is currently ranked. What is his ranking? Event factor three. No. It says he got. No, see, it says there he wasn't there though. When you actually click on that, it just says his last one was in Istanbul. Yes. So he's registered, but didn't show. But didn't show. Yep. So there we go. That makes sense. That makes sense because I couldn't imagine uh, him not placing in the top ten. But there mm -hmm. you go. So. Japan dominates again in Okinawa. No, yeah, in Okinawa. And what else is new? Ryo Kiyuna winning gold. Kiyoshimizu winning gold. Araga back winning gold in the men's minus 84. There are some Canadians on the list here. There is, actually. Katie yeah. Campbell was there. She got fifth in female community minus 55. And in female minus 50. Oh, there's another one, minus 55. From minus 55, yeah. Claudio Leo Liu. Yeah. From Canada as well. Uh, Haya, Haya Juma got in top 10. She got ninth. Now, her Haya actually isn't a Canadian citizen. Yeah, that's right. She's not. She's not. She has until the end of this year, actually, I believe, to to get that sorted out. Hopefully she does. Yeah, no kidding. Um, United States, there is uh, Cyrus Lingi. Cyrus? Cyrus Lingi, female committee minus 68, or 68 plus. Illinois Shotokan Karate Clubs. Um, who else do we have here from around the world? Well, lots of people from around the world. Actually, there's a good smattering of clubs here. There's some like Saudi Arabia to Germany to Kazakhstan. Thailand. Yeah, well, it's in Asia, so I can see there being more. Jordan, Australia. But there's a lot of Finland, Europeans. Yeah. There's a lot of European clubs here. Um, other than Japan winning in some categories pretty strongly, like especially kata, uh, there's a good smattering of, of clubs all over the place. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. That's the results from the Series A in Okinawa, November 25th and 26th, the last Series A, the last K1 of the year. Until 22 WKF events next year. That's right, yeah. We should go to the World Championships. Going to be in Madrid. Madrid. 
Yeah, because they moved it from Lima to Madrid. That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, should we get into some technical tactical? Sure. Well, let's talk about the new WKF rule amendment. All right. So basically what it says is you get so, Senshu. I could read it, but I know what it says now. Okay. So this is a new amendment for 2018 on, in Kumite, the Senshu rule. Go for it. So first person who scores an uncontested point means the other person doesn't also score a point in the first exchange gets Senshu. So we say, Yame. We go like, Ao. Jorenzuki. You go... Then we go senshu, and we yeah. give like a flat hand. Yes. And the rule says point your index finger, but whatever. Flat. Yeah. So then you get senshu. So if there's a tie at the end, the person with senshu wins. But this one says, um, if the person with senshu gets a category two penalty, Joe Guy running away, clinching, wrestling, pushing, or standing, basically tries not to fight in the last fifteen seconds. They lose senshu. They lose senshu by twenty percent. Twenty percent means it didn't happen. Yes. And Aka al senshu torimasen. So they can't rely on having senshu. That's right. This so is to takes... for, force people to fight. Yeah. So that yeah. takes away from that la little tactic at the last 15 seconds. It's about, I kind of like this. I mean, the, the stepping out, it works. It helps, obviously, if you're ahead. But yeah, it, it's forcing you to fight. So, so I really like this for sure. What happens if a competitor, someone's fighting, it's, it's, it, let's say it's a three-minute men's match. Mm -hmm. So in the first two minutes, zero to two minutes and 30 seconds, or zero to two minutes and 45 seconds, and one person's more of the aggressor and one person's just more of a dodger. Mm -hmm. Are there any penalties? Well, it would depend. What do you mean? If you're just dodging techniques you're but not countering or not engaging, you're just dodging, it, you get... um. So we use a circular motion fashion. Yeah, yeah. And that means that you are avoiding combat. It's a category two penalty. Yeah, okay. Almost no one ever gets it. Yeah. Because uh, officials who start handing out like points and penalties, points and penalties, it's, you have to be really sophisticated and mm. pretty much it almost never happens. Right, right. But what you'll see, I think, is stuff like this will happen. And the next rule is right now they have like after 20 seconds, they give both both sides penalty but if someone I, i've just got this, this gut feeling and it falls along with this if someone starts throwing punches and the other person doesn't counter eventually they're going to start um giving penalties for lack of combat yeah yeah you know? yeah so because this is a lack of combat you know what shobu hajime means fight yes shobu means to fight it means have a fight fight go go so if you're in the dojo and the two people are just bouncing that sensei goes it's shobu Morons! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're supposed to, you're supposed to be fighting, not yeah. bouncing. Yeah. So um, that was interesting. This will be easy to do as long as. Hmm. No, I think it's good. It, it makes the thing is, like, do you stop the match at 15 seconds and go 20 miles in? Oh no, this is only if they use. Oh no, no, this is right. It's, a, it's just only if they use category two. And yes. Then, so it's yes. like 10 if they seconds. Use it to, to their they step out. Thing, yeah. So it's Joe Guy to go. Immediately to a category to go to Hansel Kochui, and then the and then they lose Senshu. Senshu, no Senshu. Twenty percent is going to be weird because it's going to look like uh, um, as long as they say Senshu, because you don't say the word Senshu, it looks like you canceled that last command. So this will be effective for the Nationals then. Could be. Yeah, it's not a hard thing to remember. No, but yeah. it's going to change. It changes for sure. It changes yeah. the way you fight. Oh man. So tell us more about fitness training tips and how we can fight better. Okay, let's do it. We're not going to talk so much about how you can fight better. We're going to talk about how you can train better, how you can train better for your karate stance. We need that for fighting. Well, you do, but it's going to be more specific for kata and kumite because if you think about it, we've talked about it before in kumite, it's more of that uh, plyometric, more of that yes. stretch running, pop, 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 pop. In kata, there's that hold, that isometric mm. hold, and then you explode to the next yep. one. So how to train, how to get better karate, how you can train to get better karate stances. So you want to train in those ways that they, that they work. So go into like a squat stance and hold it mm -hmm. and then explode into a squat jump. So as high as you can and then go right back down into to a squat and hold it again. So Write it down. We're hold, doing it jump, okay. hold, hold, jump, hold. So squat jump. Squat jump. Or you can also do like a, a, a long jump, like a lunge forward. So you're in your squat. Yep. You lunge forward as hard as you can. You stop. You stick it. And then you jump forward again. But you have to get that stop and then the, the forward. And you want to have that explosiveness. So from... We do that in like a, a frog squat. So you yeah, leap, yeah. swing, 
land. You gotta hold it. Yes. Or but we, I mean, we, you could do it even in like a shikadashi stance or whatever mm, stance you, okay. you use. You hold it, explode up or explode forward, and then go right back down in that stance. And the whole trick is to get a hundred percent right from the beginning. So don't have that preparatory movement where it's kind of building up the momentum, building up the momentum, uh, and just then pop. Yeah. Just pop. Yeah, yeah. Just pop. So just pop straight from the stance. Boom into the next one. Right back in and hold it. That'll be very important for kata stances. For kumite stances, it's you you want to utilize that that plyometric, that pop, pop, that bouncing, yes. bouncing. So you do the same thing, but instead of popping up and then holding it at the bottom, you pop up, and then as soon as your feet touch the ground again, you pop back up again. So it's pop, 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 and you want to think about bouncing off the floor, bouncing off the floor as fast as you can. And again, it doesn't really matter if you're jumping up, if you're jumping forward. You can be in a lunge stance and jumping up in a lunge stance. It doesn't cool. really matter you could do one-legged stuff you can do you know hopping Rain across i can see you're running it all down right now yeah. that's uh yeah because that's how your muscles work when you're in the the actual stances so you want to train obviously you know tr principle specificity train the way that you perform love it there you go love it that's awesome that's how you're going to get better stances that's how you're going to improve your karate stances and your karate performance I like improving things. There you go. Boom. <laughs> That's the karate fitness training tip of the week. All right. Let's uh, just about wrap this baby up. We got some upcoming tournaments that we want to talk about. Uh, January 27th. So, so far, nothing on the international calendar for the rest of the year. Uh, December 9th and 10th, this coming weekend, locally, we have the BC Winter Games Zone 6 qualifier yep. in uh, Nanaimo. The first K1 of next year is January 27th and 29th. That's the big one. K1 Premier League in France. The Paris Open. It's going to be a big one. So that's coming that uh, January 27th to the 29th. And yeah, that's, uh, that pretty much wraps up things here in the Karate 360 world. Next year is going to be huge. Uge. Uge. Uge, as the Americans would it's say. It's going to be massive. Uge. Hey, next week on the show, I'm going to talk about innovation. Let's talk about it. Next week. Next week. Which will be next week. Which will be, well, four days from now. Yeah, Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> but people might not catch it until Thanks Monday. Thanks for waiting for us, everybody. We just uh, we had a busy weekend. Get had a busy weekend, so we got it. Uh, we still bring value. Absolutely. All right. I'm Kalen Anglos. I'm Richard Mosdell. We'll talk to you guys next week. For sure. San. Goku. Maru. Bye. Bye.